Hey, so what exactly is image noise? How do we prevent it? Or what do you do if your footage is already stuck with too much noise? I'm gonna split this video up into three different parts with time codes, uh, so you can skip to the part that's most relevant to you. Section one is all about digital image capture, which is how light, lenses, and sensors all work together. Section two is all about noise, like what is noise, what causes noise, how many different types of noise are there. And section three is all about how to denoise your image, and we're gonna be using a free built-in effect within After Effects and also a paid third-party plugin for Premiere Pro. Let's get into it. Light is a form of energy. Moving electrons, or electric currents, cause a magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field creates an electric current. Both of these things interact with each other to make an electromagnetic wave. This electromagnetic radiation comes in forms like radio waves, microwaves, infrared, gamma rays, the visible light spectrum, etc., etc. And in the middle of that spectrum, we have what is called the visible light spectrum. That's all the stuff that we can see with our eyes. Light is constantly moving around, traveling in a straight line, bouncing around off many different surfaces and objects. A lens is a device used to focus light. With all of the light bouncing around in the room, a lens uses its glass to redirect the light into a single point, the sensor. The more direct your light is, the sharper the image. That's where focusing comes into play. In short, by focusing, you're moving the glass components to better direct light from a specific distance from the lens to hit a more direct part of the sensor. In a digital camera, the sensor is filled with many, many photosites, which effectively make up your pixels. Each photosite, when exposed, collects photons. The camera measures these photons by assessing the strength of each electrical signal. These signals are assigned a digital value and then stored as a file. To help give us color information, each cavity is assigned a filter to block out different colors of light, allowing for precise primary color measurements of red, green, and blue. Most modern digital cameras use the Bayer array, which is a common filter array or layout. Digital sensors end up tossing out about two-thirds of the light information, so this array helps to approximate colors for every pixel. The Bayer array contains twice as many green sensors as it does red and blue. The human eye is more sensitive to green light than it is to red and blue light. So the extra green sensors help to produce an image that is less noisy than if red, blue, and green sensors were all organized evenly. Each camera has a specific dynamic range rating, which is affected by the ISO setting. The ISO basically chooses the range of light to digitize. The amplification of ISO also amplifies image noise, which is why you see more noise at higher ISOs. So what is noise? Noise is the random variation in pixels, often appearing brighter, darker, or discolored. It's what some people describe as grain. It's the undesired fluctuation between luminance and color. Image noise can appear for multiple reasons, but noise can generally be categorized by internal noise and external noise. External noise is less common and has a very different appearance than the internal noise we often label as grain. External noise is an interference caused by different kinds of radiation or waves, like a strong radio transmission or cosmic radiation. Internal noise is caused by sensor illumination levels, heat, and electricity. The main types of internal noise are Gaussian noise, shot noise, and salt and pepper noise. Gaussian noise is the image noise you're probably most familiar with. It's the blue colored pixels changing in color or luminance in the dark sections of your image. Gaussian noise can be caused by poor illumination, high sensor temperature, or image transmission. This type of noise can be avoided by adding more light to your scene or by not overvolting your sensor by having a high ISO. We'll mainly be focusing on Gaussian noise, but just so you briefly understand the other types of noise, we'll speed through them. Shot noise is quite similar in behavior to Gaussian noise, but it usually appears in the brighter parts of your image. It's an electric charge issue, and it can occur in the actual photon counting of the device. Salt and pepper noise is characterized by the appearance of bright pixels in dark areas and dark pixels in bright areas. This noise can be caused by quick changes in image signal, analog to digital conversion errors, or bit errors in transmission. The best way to deal with noise is to try to prevent it from being baked into your footage in the first place. When that's not possible, it's time for noise reduction in post. Put simply, the best way to prevent noise in your image is by making sure that both the image is exposed correctly and you're shooting at the right ISO for the region of light you'd like to record. One of the best ways to test this for your camera is to set it up on a tripod, record clips at different ISO ranges, trying to keep the image exposure the same. 
Sometimes when you couldn't nail the shot on the shoot day, you're left to scramble and save it in the edit. I've used it in music videos, wedding videos, concert recap videos. It's not ideal, but at least we have options. I'll go over two methods for noise reduction today. One that uses stock effects within Adobe After Effects, and one that is a paid plugin for Premiere Pro. There are more ways to approach noise reduction, but these are the methods that I feel most comfortable in teaching, and they've worked well for me in my career this far. Personally, I prefer the third-party plugin, but I'm also aware that not everyone has an extra 75 bucks laying around to go out and purchase a plugin just to reduce noise. So let's kick it off with the stock After Effects method. I've pulled up a couple examples of noisy footage that we're going to process today. If you look in the darker parts of the image, you'll see just how noisy this clip is. Noise reduction is a backup plan and should be treated as such. If your footage is seriously noisy, it's best to just scrap it and reshoot. But sometimes reshooting isn't an option. Either you made a camera setting mistake or perhaps the client wants a specific slow motion shot which you know can't be done without getting overly noisy footage. Neither method is perfect, but they can help you save the edit. We're going to start with the After Effects method. It's not my favorite, but this is what you can do for free within the Adobe ecosystem. You can either directly import your footage into After Effects, or if you're working from a Premiere Pro timeline, go ahead and right click your footage and select Replace with After Effects Composition. Go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for Remove Grain. Drag and drop this effect onto your footage. This white square is the preview region. Anything inside of this square has the effect applied, while everything outside of the square is the original. This preview window allows you to save time by only rendering the effect on a small section of footage and it allows you to compare the before and after side by side. The default settings are already getting rid of some noise, but not quite enough. The noise reduction slider controls how strong the effect is. If we slide it way up, you'll see that it's removing noise, but at the cost of destroying the sharpness and detail of our image. It looks kind of like one of those overly smooth filters from Facetune. <laughs> we'll reset its value to 1 for now. Passes tells us how many times the effect will process the image, or how many times it'll pass through the image. The higher the number, the greater the strain on your computer. We'll leave it at three. The mode section allows you to choose between multi-channel and single channel. If we twirl down the channel noise reduction section, you'll see the specific sliders for red, green, and blue noise reduction. This allows you greater control if you'd like to target a specific noise channel. To isolate channels for a clearer picture of your noise, click this color channel button. By selecting red, green, and blue, we can see how the noise is affecting each channel. I encourage you to play around with these settings if you'd like to better fine tune your noise reduction, but today we're going to be working with full RGB. GB. Next, we're going to mess with the sampling. Sampling tells the effect which sections of the frame it should use to build a noise profile from. Switch the sample selection mode from automatic to manual. Automatic can be okay, but I think it's best to place these little squares manually. Noise profiles work best when they're sampling the noisiest sections of the frame and sections in the frame that are pretty devoid of texture, things like an untextured wall or a dark t-shirt, etc. You want the samples to be representative of the noise in the frame. So we're going to make sure the effect is selected, then we'll move the sample regions to the parts of the frame we want to sample. Now that we have a better sample, let's move on to temporal filtering. Temporal filtering makes the effect apply noise reduction based on the surrounding frames instead of just the frame we're working on. It'll help prevent you from getting like a big blotchy section of somewhat reduced noise. Enable temporal filtering and play around with the amount and motion sensitivity sliders. Lastly, we're going to mess around with the fine tuning. Twirl down the fine tuning menu. Based on your current noise reduction, you may still see some unwanted color information. That can be remedied by increasing the chroma suppression slider. Next, we'll increase the texture to get some detail back. If we boost the slider way up, lots of noise starts to reappear. So use this slider carefully and know that we're balancing a trade-off of detail recovery and noise. If you want even more sharpness, twirl down the unsharp mask menu and play around with the amount slider. And there we go. Let's take a look at the before and after. Now this is a little softer than my liking, but this is also a fairly noisy clip. This next method is my favorite. It's way faster and I think the results are generally better. We'll be working with the Neat Video plugin for Premiere Pro. If you don't have the plugin, go to neatvideo.com. 
click the purchase tab and you'll see that for $75, you can get noise reduction plugins for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, Resolve, and other software. Personally, I think this plugin is worth every penny. This is going to be a fairly surface level tutorial, but it's worth noting that this plugin has some very powerful fine tuning adjustments. If you want a more advanced tutorial for neat video, let me know in the comments, I'm totally down. So we have a couple clips to do noise with this plugin today, starting off with the clip we did noise reduction to in After Effects. I've also included this clip. Once the plugin has been installed, make sure to set the playback resolution to full. This plugin requires full playback quality to function correctly. Next, go to the effects panel and search for the neat video plugin. Drag and drop onto your footage. From there, we're going to scrub through this clip to find a frame that has the best sampling area. It's the same general idea from the After Effects sampling. Go to the effect control panel, click prepare. We're going to wait for a few seconds while Premiere Pro delivers the input frames, then click build. This is our plugin control. You'll see on the bottom it offers us a view of some different channels. Click Auto Profile. If the input frame is good enough, the plugin will make a selection to build the noise profile from. If you think you can make a better selection, move the selection window around and find a part of the frame that is pure noise by using the channel views. If I drag this selection to a random part of the footage, you'll see that I get a not uniform warning. That means there's too much texture. It'll prevent the plugin from constructing an accurate noise profile. Find a section that has only noise. Once you're happy with the selection, move over to the Adjust and Preview tab. This will show us the processed frame. If we click on the frame, it shows us the before and after. Look in the darkest parts of your footage to see the difference. If you're happy with the denoising filter, click Apply. From there, all we need to do is render the clip so we can watch playback. So here's our before and after. Let's quickly denoise one more clip. To recap, drag the effect to the footage and click Prepare. After waiting a few seconds, click Build. Click Auto Profile. This time, the plugin failed to find a good section of noise without texture interference. Look at the Y Enhanced channel. We need to make a better selection. If I move the sample region around, it looks like this section of metal might work. Click Build Profile. Now we'll go to the Adjust and Preview tab to see how accurate our filter is. Click and hold for the before and after. Nice, this is pretty solid. We'll click apply. Let's watch the before and after. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, do the YouTube thing and obliterate the like button, subscribe if you wanna see more general camera related stuff, etc., etc. you know the deal. I included links to my sources and image attribution in the description below, as well as a link to Neat Video's site. Also, hit me with any special requests in the comments below. Thanks for watching, peace. Mm -hmm.